and this is just a workflow that I did before. So you can see it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, what this particular workflow is going to do is, um, in many urban environments, uh, there are fairly strict uh, regulations on what kind of buildings you can make and where you can make them. What this workflow does is it says, given any uh, site boundary for a, an urban build, an urban plot, um, I want to build the max building for that area. Uh, given a uh, floor, uh, floor area ratio. And I also want to accord to other zoning regulations that might happen in that municipality. So my starting point for this study is to say, well, here is my um, site layout. I've just done it as a simple rectangle. You could have any kind of site, pentagonal or what have you. And then the other piece is that I'm gonna cut out of that site plan a rectangle that represents a plaza area. Now, many cities, um, I, I modeled this particularly on, on uh, Lower Manhattan, New York City, uh, if you cut some amount of territory out of your site for a public plaza, you get a certain bonus amount of building that you can put up. And I've made another node here that allows me to calculate the maximum amount of building that I can have given a site perimeter and a plaza. So I can just plug these inputs in. So I've got my site and I've got my uh, plaza that I'm cutting from it and all I need to do now is just press a button and I can get actually a, a accurately calculated envelope that is essentially an allowable building footprint and um, extension of that building from given those starting conditions. I can also go in and start doing things like playing what if scenarios. If I didn't cut that much of a plaza, how much building could I do? So I can just change a couple of parameters and run the definition again. And now I can see that with a smaller plaza area, I can do a shorter building. I can still have my same floor area ratio. So with these sorts of inputs, I can now just start meddling with this design and quickly getting design variations that might make more sense for my design. Now, I've hidden some of the complexity of this design because Dynamo allows you to take whole groups of nodes like this, and with a click of a button, you can do something that's called uh, make a new node from the selection, and it squashes all of these nodes down into a compact little container. This one is um, a little bit more complex. So if I double click into this custom node, it opens it up and I can inspect it. And you can see it, it sort of looks like spaghetti in here. Um, there's many more functionalities. Uh, there's a lot of other uh, operations that I'm doing in here. But once I've thought through this process, I can basically make it compact so that I can either share it with other people on my team or I can reuse this in other projects. So the other thing that this allows me to do is now I essentially have, um, I've created a tool for making buildings. Uh, now that I have a tool for making buildings, I can also do variations on that building. So here I've got one other workflow that allows me to not just look at uh, one version of the building at a time, cutting the plaza into various sizes, but what I can do with this one now is I can look at many variations of this same building logic. So here I've got nine different variations, all of which are allowable by the local zoning standards. And as a designer, I can now go through these different variations on buildings, all of which are allowable by the local zoning ordinances and make decisions based on whether or not I want to have a tall building, maybe for aesthetic purposes, or if a shorter building makes more sense because steel is expensive and I don't want to go really tall, or maybe I just feel like having a very generous uh, public plaza and that will then necessitate that I make a taller building in order to optimize the site. So this is all being done entirely within Dynamo Studio, which is, again, the standalone application. What I want to show you now is taking this same workflow, this same building generator, and bringing it into Revit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very similar workflow to the one that I just showed you, and I'm going to put it in the context of Revit. So the operation that I was doing before is one that could happen entirely uh, without Revit or um, 
by somebody who may or may not be on the team, may not be revitized. Uh, here, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same workflow in the context of a project. So I've got a lower Manhattan uh, model, and then I've got this site right here. And I want to do that same operation to see how much building can I fit on this site. So in my add-ins tab, and this is where you'll see it in um, Revit 2015, um, the latest subscription updates, and when you get Service Pack 1 for Revit 2016, uh, you can fire up Dynamo. And you're going to see something that looks very similar to what we were looking at before. So uh, now, again, I have my Dynamo interface. I'm going to open up uh, another version of that same file that we were looking at before. You'll see that the interface is almost identical to what was happening before. There's one difference, though, which is that if you look in the library over here of the different functions, there's a Revit library. So that means that in addition to things like points, lines, planes, and so on, you also have access now to um, certain Revit element creation. Like I can go in and I can look at all the different kinds of elements I can make. Like I can make real Revit walls, which are more than geometry. They're metadata and what have you. I can make Revit topologies. Um, I can move uh, parameters around between families, all sorts of things. But uh, what I want to show you is that I can also take that same workflow that I was working on in Dynamo Studio, and I can use it again in the context of a real project. So here again is my building generator. And this time, rather than passing it in a couple of uh, fairly abstracted um, rectangles that define a plaza and uh, the building site, what I'm doing here is I'm actually pulling data out of my project and I'm representing it here within the graph. So you can see this geometry here is pulled directly from my project environment. That is this site right in here. So the Revit file has the ability to pull out information from the Revit model and then pass that into the Dynamo definition. So now if I look again at the same definition, I've got my plaza, which plugs into my plaza. I've got my curves, which plug into my site. I can also visualize this stuff inside of Revit. So now if I run this, uh, you're going to see the same thing happen. It's going to churn through some of that geometry. And then I'm going to have, again, um, a fully maximized for my particular site building that is now conforming specifically to this site. I also get to pre-visualize it here in the Revit environment. Now this isn't real Revit geometry yet. This is actually just sort of a, these are actually temporary graphics. But if I want to go in and start making real Revit elements out of that, that's also an option now because I'm running inside of Revit. In order to do that, I'll show you just uh, a handful of other nodes that are particular for turning this sort of abstract geometry into Revit elements. In particular, it's this guy here. There's a node that's called floor by outline type and level. So floors need a particular amount of information. They need curves. They need lines. All of these lines, which are defining my floors, I can take out and I can do a couple of small operations on them to basically make sure that um, they're lining up in the right way in terms of how the lists are manipulated. And when I run this definition, what this is going to do is it's going to take those lines and say, now, Revit, you go and make floor slabs out of all of those lines. So now if I go in and I look in my project, um, I've now got real Revit floors instantiated, you know, and they behave like any other floor. Um, I can now pass this file off to other team members uh, who may or may not know anything about Dynamo, and they can now use these floors in their regular workflow. I can go and I can update things in this Dynamo graph, and it'll update these floors. So we can work uh, as a team now. Um, I can keep going with this sort of thing. I can also make walls. So for instance, here I've got another couple of nodes that are specifically used for making walls. Same kind of information. I'm just going to be passing in things like they need to know what level they belong on. And they're going to need to know um, where they're going to go. They need curve information. And then if I run that, 
uh, it'll churn through each one of those. It takes a few seconds because you know Revit needs to make a lot of information. And so <clears throat> in just a couple of sort of keystrokes, I can go from this sort of abstract drawing of uh, an ideal building site to something that's actually a fairly well-realized uh, building model. Um, this gets to be even more interesting when you get into sort of bigger and more complicated pieces of, of building geometry. And I'm just going to open up this other file because it takes a little while to generate. Um, and so it's, it's not quite so fun to watch. But it's interesting when you start putting these things together with more complex Revit elements. So this same building definition uh, can be used to generate um, you know, a building that is has a, a significantly higher level of detail when you start using things like uh, Revit curtain systems, storefront geometry, that sort of thing. Um, and that's really where you get the payoff of using a tool like Dynamo together with a tool like Revit, where you can start representing um, really very well-developed building ideas um, in relatively short order. So that's um, that's the, a quick tour of sort of a full workflow from the standalone application of Dynamo Studio and how you can work both independently of and also uh, directly in Revit.